a head coach for 15 seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was named the NFL Coach of the Year twice. He had an overall record of 161, 99, and 1. He led Pittsburgh to two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl victory. Hall of Famer, Bill Cowher. He was a safety for 14 seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a member of the famed Steel Curtain. He played in six AFC Championship games and four Super Bowls. He had 51 interceptions for 490 yards. He was named to the Super Bowl Silver Anniversary Team Hall of Famer, Donnie Schell. <laughs> then finally, a safety for 12 seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He kind of changed the game. He made a huge impact with his tenacious play as a premier safety of his era. He guided the Steelers to seven playoff appearances, five divisional titles, and two Super Bowl championships. He was also drafted by Coach Cower himself, who's also in his class. He was named to the NFL's all-decade team of the 2000s, Hall of Famer, Troy Palomalu. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you would have a seat, you've got a microphone right there by you. Uh, you've got water that's close by. Uh, if some of our selectors are here, you know, uh, just let us know if you have a question. Uh, it's a tremendous blessing, especially uh, with, with, well, with Coach Cower, of course, the fact that he drafted me. Uh, we were talking about how I got a, you know, the call from him from the 412 Pittsburgh area code, and I was initially upset because it wasn't a California area code. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, obviously, it was a huge uh, blessing uh, for me to play for a Hall of Fame coach for the, the time period that we had together, and, and as well as um, Donnie Shell. The Pittsburgh Steelers defense of the 70s laid the foundation for the great defenses that I've been a part of. And it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous honor for me to be in the same class with him as well. It's funny because we, we needed to get, we wanted a safety, targeted a safety. And um, the one thing that was taking place around the NFL around that time was just the tight end position became a position that became a little bit of a uh, matchup problem. And so, you know, we, so we weren't at actually Troy's workout. We saw it, and then like, whoa. And um, I put on some film and watched him play, and I said, okay, we're not going to get there where we are. And so <clears throat> I knew Carl Peterson from Kansas City, and he thought we were looking for Larry Johnson, and um, I, I assured him that we were not moving up to get a running back. And um, we got up there, and we got Troy, and when he came, you know, it's like, wow, the skill set of this guy is more than just a safety who can cover. And we threw a lot at him. We put him in a lot of different positions the first year. And I always feel like I throw a lot of things on the board that I think at some point it will resonate. And it probably didn't resonate the first year, but I think in the long run what he was able to do, because he's a smart player, um, he was able to understand conceptually what we were trying to do. And consequently, he took those concepts to another level. Um, his skill set, his preparation, his instincts, his playmaking ability just superseded anybody I've ever been around. And at times, we had to live with choice decisions. Not always easy at times, um, but uh, I would say for every mistake he made, he probably won his three or four games um, just be, by being him. Um, special player, and the more you're around him, the more you saw it. I, I, yeah, I, I think the reputation that he had going in, and unfortunately for me, I, I, I didn't watch any football growing up at all. So, you know, a lot of a lot of my friends were telling me everybody's reputation. Oh, you got to watch out for Heinz Ward. You know, he's going to knock you out, do all these sort of things. And, you know, uh, Coach Cower's reputation was, you know, that I'm sorry to give away your, you know, your mojo here, but, you know, he's definitely not as mean as he looks. <laughs> <laughs> But I think one thing for Coach Cower is he always had the players' backs. And um, I think that's, that's one thing that he always expected his coaches to prepare us um, at such a high level that, you know, he just let us go out and play. And he always had our backs and the decisions that we made. And I think that was, that's really important for players who are, you know, trying to develop into something d different and special. Let me just uh, say here that, you know, we didn't, 
we, we tried to surprise everybody we could, as obviously we did with uh, Coach Cower and Coach Johnson. But uh, Donnie, maybe you could share with us what you were feeling, because you didn't say anything when I called you. <laughs> okay. My wife said I talk all the time about <laughs> when David called, I was at a loss for words. All, all I could say was, wow. He said, well, what else? I said, it's, David, there's nothing that's there. But like Harold, you know, we, we waited a long time, and you have to be patient. It does rubs on you a, a while, but, um, you know, good people, uh, they don't make it through tough times. They are made during tough times. And that's, that's what I learned about this whole process. And I'm not bitter, but I'm better uh, from having gone through this process. It helped me mature uh, as a believer in Jesus Christ and to be, wait and be patient, uh, and the Lord will answer your prayers. As a coach and a broadcaster, when you saw these players either coaching against them or watching them, did you sense that greatness and realize that all these gentlemen one day would make it to where they are now? Well, I mean, I, and there's so many more. Um, you know, I can only imagine what they go through. And, you know, for us up here in the Centennial class, it was a very quick process. Um, we had this all happen in less than three weeks for us. Um, these guys have been doing this for three months. And, you know, so... I, so you sit there and say, what's the process and who gets in, who doesn't get in? Every one of these guys that make it as a finalist, I mean, they are, and Dave Baker has said it best, is it's not a better matter or if, it's a matter of when. And you see these guys, and it's such an honor, you know, to play against Edge, Hutch. Um, you know, you, you sit there and see Steve Atwood. I remember when he sat there and um, hit Christian Okoye. Um, <laughs> that was one of the best hits I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, it was amazing. And so it's, 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 it's very special. And um, you, you do see it. And it's a blessing, I think, as Jimmy said, we, we wouldn't be up here and be recognized if we didn't have great players around us. And, um, you know, you sit there and talk about Isaac Bruce and the fastest, best show on turf. And, you know, that guy was, you know, amazing receiver. So... Um, it's it's a blessing to be amongst these guys as a coach, and and Jimmy and I were coaching the players in this thing. We even we couldn't screw it up. Um, so it uh, um, it is a real honor. I, I think the Steel organization is, is a is one is a great organization. Uh, the Rooneys are, are great people, um, and like Coach Landry, it, it's it's faith football, faith family, and football uh, uh, for them. Um, Chuck Knoll, I think, uh, uh, did a great job of, of drafting. I think when he came in, uh, he noticed that the Seals was, were trading away all their draft picks. So that's, he said, that's not the way you build a championship team. You build a championship team by using your draft choices. And he built that team uh, through the draft. Uh, and I think we set a legacy back in the, uh, for defensively um, in the early 70s uh, that's kind of Matt, the what the what the people in Pittsburgh um, were doing. They, they were uh, they added to. They were hardworking steel mill uh, people, and they came out on Sundays to see us play. And uh, we tried to be very entertaining so they can enjoy it and so they can come back the next day. But um, it was just that attitude that we had that uh, Chuck believed in great teachers. Um, and people that teach and communicate uh, with one another. Um, I think uh, when Coach Cower came in, uh, he had the same attitude. Uh, I, mean, I remember doing a training camp with you, and uh, well, matter of fact, uh, Marv and I was the, the internship coaches for you and uh, uh, Marty Schottenheim staff in Kansas City before uh, the Steelers hired him. Um, and he, it kept, he kept the tradition, and now we got Coach Tomlin. Um, I think the, um, the traditional of coaches and the bringing that same attitude. Um, I think Coach Tumlin has done an outstanding job this year. Uh, I think he lost the first three or four games and he came back. He, I think it was eight and eight. He had a chance to get in the playoff and lost, what, two quarterbacks, three, two of the starting quarterbacks. And uh, we just kept that tradition going. And I think it's there. And um, it's kind of like Troy said, he said, it, you know, when he got there, you know, he, he saw the tradition that we had. And I think uh, uh, guys come in and they play ball the Steelers way. And um, I remember seeing um, the NFL highlight film of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the, I end on this note and then answering your question. He said, uh, this, this um, 
the broadcaster said in a deep voice, there are 31 teams in the National Football League, and then there's the Pittsburgh Steelers. 